Studio Ghibli has given us some of the most prominent animated films of all time. They capture their audience with unmatched levels of artistry, wonder, nostalgia, and themes that transport their audience to an entirely new world. From flowing grass and serene landscapes to their unique character design, they have one of the most recognizable styles in animation. However, there is one thing that sticks out in every Ghibli movie, and that's the food. With hundreds of thousands of people tasting and recreating these dishes, it's not hard to see that they're absolutely iconic. Almost every single one of their movies features a food scene which often plays an important role in the story, whether it's a quick snack or a full-on cooking scene. Food in anime always looks particularly delicious, but there's just something special about Studio Ghibli food and I want to get to the bottom of it. So, in today's video, we are going to take a deep dive into the deep dishes of Studio Ghibli and what they actually mean to the film. Let's start off with the most obvious reason. The food looks beautiful. Each dish looks luscious, soft, and juicy. It glistens like Edward in the sunlight. Miyazaki has found a way to make even mundane food look like a five-star meal cooked by Gordon Ramsay himself. A dish like herring and pumpkin pie is something that I would absolutely never have the desire to try in real life, but the way it's drawn and animated makes my mouth water. One reason why each meal is drawn with such detail and care is because Miyazaki has made all of these dishes himself. Studio Ghibli has stated that Miyazaki makes every single dish in his movies, which adds yet another layer of attention to these scenes. Instead of just referencing a photo, he goes through the entire process of creating it, which means he fully understands the food that he's drawing. Because of this, he can capture the true essence of the food with details that may have otherwise been lost. Looking at his beautiful food has a psychological effect as well. Studies have shown that looking at food or images of food stimulates your appetite for the real thing. When humans were foragers, seeing food meant a higher chance of survival, so there would be an actual reaction within the brain. When foraging for something to eat, we primarily relied on our sense of sight. Seeing food became anticipating food and ultimately obtaining food. So, it's not surprising at all that sight still influences our desire for food. If you look at any restaurant advertisement, they're likely showing off the food in the best way possible because this is what captures our attention. The next reason why Ghibli food scenes stick out is because they elicit feelings of belonging and comfort. There's nothing more unsatisfying than watching a family on TV with a big, beautiful dinner set up only for them to hover a fork in front of their mouth the entire time. They've set up a familiar scene, but that's exactly what it feels like a set. There's just always something missing. This doesn't happen with Studio Ghibli films at all. Ghibli often associates their meals with family and togetherness, which fills the viewer with a sense of security, familiarity, and even nostalgia as if we ourselves are part of the group. Watching people eat beautiful food has been proven to elicit feelings of satisfaction and quenches hunger within ourselves even if we've had nothing to eat. So, when we see a Ghibli family eating a meal together, we're able to eat together with them by using our eyes. Through this, we also gain a sense of social fulfillment, which combats feelings of loneliness and isolation. These reactions actually happen while watching mukbangs as well, which is why they can be so addicting to people. The third reason why Studio Ghibli food is important is because most food scenes in Ghibli actually move the story along. The food is often shown for a specific reason and is intertwined with the story instead of just a buffer between scenes. And in fact, many important conversations happen while preparing, eating, or cleaning up the meal. Food is often times the reason the plot moves forward. For example, in Spirited Away, the entire story is set off because Chihiro's parents ate food that didn't belong to them, which resulted in them turning into pigs. This one food scene was the igniting moment for the rest of the movie. It shows themes of greed and temptation, which is taken even further when No-Face later tries to consume everything in his path. In both of these scenarios, Chihiro is the one who shows restraint and puts an end to the indulgence. Food also plays a huge role in Kiki's delivery service. Of course, the most important setting would be the bakery, where they're surrounded by food. This is where she is taken in and taken care of. It's where she loses herself in her confidence and then ultimately where she finds it again. One of the most important scenes of the movie is when Kiki stays late at the old woman's house to help her bake herring and pumpkin pie for her granddaughter. She knew that she would be late for her party, but she wanted to help out the person who was kind to her. She persevered through the struggles of baking the pie, flying through the rain, and was finally able to 
deliver it to the granddaughter. However, to Kiki's surprise, the granddaughter was absolutely disgusted and did not want it. After everything that it took to get there, the food was rejected. The scene is integral because in Kiki's eyes, this was a failure, which led to her losing her powers. Lastly, in Grave of the Fireflies, food was a turning point for Seita and Setsuko and eventually their downfall as well. A dispute over food is what led them to leave their aunt's house and live in a bomb shelter on their own. For a time, the ability to make and eat their own food was symbolic of their newfound freedom and independence, but it couldn't last long because their rations quickly ran out. After that, obtaining food became their biggest struggle, which caused almost every single issue that they dealt with moving forward. These are all examples of how food in Studio Ghibli moves the plot forward, but these food scenes also say a lot about each character. We can discover more about them without them having to say a single thing. When Sophie shoves Calcifer down to make breakfast, it shows how her confidence has grown through her curse and old age. She seemed to have left a lot of her inhibitions behind after growing into an old woman because taming Calcifer is something she may not have been able to do before. Even Hal was surprised that she got Calcifer to listen. Another important food scene in Spirited Away is when Chihiro cries with Haku after eating the onigiri that he gave to her. This scene not only shows Chihiro's emotional vulnerability, but it also shows Haku's kindness. It's an intimate scene shared between the two of them with the rice balls acting as a buffer. They show a level of comfort with each other that they haven't shown with anyone else and they share this moment over food. Similarly, in When Marnie Was There, Marnie and Anna connect with each other over a picnic. It's over the tea and cookies that Anna finally opens up about herself to anyone for the first time throughout the whole movie. She answers every single question that Marnie asks, even when some of them happen to be things that people had asked her earlier in the movie. Anna didn't want to answer the others, but with Marnie, things come naturally and she can be honest. It's over this food that Marnie brought that we see the deep bonds that these two girls share with each other and truly learn about their feelings. In Princess Mononoke, San chews up food and then spits it into Ashitaka's mouth when he's sick from the curse and getting shot. The way she performs this simple act tells us exactly who she is and how she was raised. Despite her rough exterior, she's actually quite caring in nature. She grew up in the wild, so spitting up chewed up food into someone else's mouth would never gross her out. Just like pulling the poisonous blood out of her mother wolf's wound with her mouth, this is an act of nurturing and it's normal for her. Overall, the food in Studio Ghibli looks beautiful, plays an important role in the story, and it helps characterize each person. Through the food scenes, Studio Ghibli also takes their time to slow the plot down and make it feel like our everyday lives. Something mundane like washing the dishes can become enchanting. Since everyone has to eat, these scenes connect our world to the dreamlike worlds of Ghibli in addition to anchoring their worlds to reality. It makes the movies feel like the magic within them is actually achievable. And when it comes down to it, I feel like this is the reason that Studio Ghibli food stands out above everything else. It's everyday life infused with magic. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you made it this far, comment the sushi emoji and I will see you in my next video. Bye!